In this presentation, colored geometric forms are the basic components of a new symbolic representation of the creation of the universe developed from G. I. Gurdjieff's Ray of Creation. This depiction unfolds from an initial point of light to an equilateral triad to become the successive forms that represent each of the new worlds. The first unfolding occurs when the enlivening of the three points of the initial triad, world one, derived directly from the center point. This indicates the separation of the singular center point into three separate but unified and co-equal impulses, unified by the circle joining the three apex points and representing the role of time in the expression of the law. This image of world three is an expression of the triune will represented by the center point. There came to our creator, all maintainer, the forced need to create our present existing megalocosmos. Our Creator Omnipotent ascertained that the Sun Absolute on which He dwelt was gradually diminishing in volume. He then decided immediately to review all the laws which maintain the existence of that then still soul cosmic concentration. Our Endlessness devoted Himself entirely to finding a possibility of averting such an inevitable end which had to occur according to the lawful commands of the merciless Herapus, and that after his long divine deliberations he decided to create our present existing megalocosmos. This image presents the ray of creation as reported by Peter Uspensky in In Search of the Miraculous. The lateral octave is an exploration of the possibilities of life to appear on a planet. 
all life forms appear in the lateral octave. Plant and animal, one, two, and three brained beings. The fulfilling of the lateral octave to the level of the three brained being also allows the possibility for higher being bodies. Now we are showing all six lateral octaves on the World 48 form. I am a man, and as such I am, in contrast to all other outer forms of animal life, created by him in his image. For he is God, and therefore I also have within myself all the possibilities and impossibilities that he has. The difference between him and myself must lie only in scale. For he is God of all presences in the universe, it follows that I also have to be God of some kind of presence on my scale. He is God and I am God. Whatever possibilities he has in relation to the presences of the universe, such possibilities and impossibilities I should also have in relation to the world subordinate to me. He is God of all the world and also of my outer world. I am God as well, although only of my inner world. He is God and I am God. For all and in everything, we have the same possibilities and impossibilities. Whatever is possible or impossible in the sphere of his great world should be possible or impossible in the sphere of my small world.